Hi everybody, Matt back with you. Hope you're doing okay. Today, I looked back on the videos I've made on YouTube. There's a lot of them. But it's a year ago since I started the challenge of finding the locations of all Todmorden's past and present pubs. At one point there are over 90 in the town and over five videos we've covered 95% of them. What I thought about doing was actually following up on something I'd thought about then which was to do past and present churches in Todmorden but actually I changed my mind. So I've just recently finished um, a 13 year career in a cinema. I worked for Pitcherville Cinema in Bradford, which was also known as Picture House and run by the National Media Museum or National Science and Media Museum. I've only left it due to circumstances beyond the cinema's control. Unfortunately, bad concrete has closed the building down. They're running pop-up cinemas across town, but uh, staff have been cut and I was quite happy to take redundancy. Uh, things will improve there. Watch this space. So I had a wonderful time in my role at the cinema, both front of house and behind the scenes, often as a duty manager as well. The cinema, Pictureville, is a unique cinema. It's the only one left in the world that screens publicly Cinerama, which is three strip cinema. It's well worth a visit when it reopens in the future. And of course the IMAX cinema within the museum was the first IMAX in the UK. So I decided it was perfect timing to not look at churches, but to look at what I class as my church, the cinema, my main love in life. Working for a cinema was actually a dream. It was the best job I could have ever had. I kind of hope I can get back into it sometime. But we're going to look round the Calder Valley from Bacup to Brighouse, Hebden to Halifax and other places in between and try and locate a hundred years worth of lost cinemas in the Calder Valley. Let's start with what was once here. The Olympia Cinema was a corrugated iron building which was built in 1908 but it was opened as a skating rink in 1909 before becoming a cinema in 1910. This was demolished in 1931 and the new Olympia Cinema, an Art Deco building, opened in 1932. The Olympia Cinema appears in this photograph when Winston Churchill visited Todmorden, but it closed as a cinema in 1966 and became a bingo club. In later life, the ground floor was a supermarket for Netto. The derelict building was demolished in 2016, as was the Abraham Ormerod Centre next to it, which was, of course, the first surgery of notorious Dr. Death, Harold Shipman. It was replaced by the Aldi in the video footage you've just seen. Todmorden's other cinema was the Hippodrome Theatre, which opened as a theatre in October 1908. Films were introduced here in 1911 and became the main focus of the building by 1917. The cinema closed in 1956 and was taken over by the Todmorden Players and the Todmorden Operatic Society. It's now run as a voluntary theatre with frequently sold out production, plays and musicals. The cinema screen is also occasionally rolled out. And they also hire exceptionally good directors here. So over this video we'll head to each little town or village along the Calder Valley that housed a cinema. As you can see, we're currently in the shadow of Eagle's Crag and we're just about to enter Cornholm. 
It's hard to believe now that there would have been a cinema in Cornholm. However, there was. Right, so now we're in now we're in Cornholm, and there was a cinema here in Cornholm from the 30s to the I think late 50s called Gem Cinema. Before that though, it existed before around about 1917 to 1931 as the BOS Cinema. The BOS, very unique name, but stood for the initials of the three owners. Uh, the Gem Cinema has vanished from here in the 1970s, uh, so there's nothing left today. But uh, there is the Gem Discount Centre building, it's not Gem Discount anymore. And when I, for the decades, I went to Hebden Cinema, uh, the advert, you had the Pearl and Dean advert, and then the next advert was always visit those magnificent men at Gem Discount. Uh, so, <laughs> who else remembers that? Anybody? I presume it was just for Hebden. So, those three owners, BOS, was Batty, Ogden, and Spencer. They actually started screenings here in 1915 and could seat 400 people. Then it became the gem in 1931, but closed in 1957 and was then finally demolished in the 1970s. The final film screening is recorded as being The Iron Petticoat with Bob Hope. So that's the former gem discount. Our bicycle repair. Uh, I've got to figure out exactly where the cinema was. I do have a picture of it. So I'm going to explore a bit. But I have a feeling it might have been here where these new houses are. The cobbled road is certainly there. This bit's all new and it's opposite the gem discount. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what side of the road it was on. Um, but if I can see anything obvious that isn't this, and I won't go any closer because it's obviously Sunday. <laughs> People will be at home. Uh, yeah, let's call it that. Okay, so this was the street that had the Gem Cinema on it. It's Harrison Street, and it's where those new flats uh, or buildings are now uh, on this cobbled road. So you can see it from the picture and make it out from the uh, little side behind. So yeah, it's been gone for about 50 years. Okay, heading to our next destination. Um, if you are music hall comedian Tom Foy, you'd call this Sabi Brig. If you are listening to announcements on the train, Sowerby Bridge. Sowerby Bridge is where we are now. Uh, as far as I know, there are no cinemas in Sowerby Bridge today. Let's find where they were. Now there's a familiar face across the road. Look who I bumped into. Danielle's here. Tom's joining us later. It's like you get to see all of the Dark Side of the Board team in one go. This is a rare treat and proof Tom and Danielle are not the same person. <laughs> okay, it's a bit wild and windy today. Uh, but uh, this is our first cinema in Hebden Bridge here at what was the Town Hall. Uh, this was called the Palace Cinema, an absolutely stunning building. Um, not a lot of info though about the cinema itself. Uh, there's information about it existing in 1917. Uh, but other than that, not much else I can tell you. Uh, so if you know when this was a cinema, opened and closed, etc. Uh, which part of the town hall it was in, let me know. What I do know is behind there, most of the building is demolished behind it. It's kind of just the frontage that's left. So instead we'll move on to this building. This was the Isoldo Cinema. It opened as the Regent Cinema in 1939. It became the Isoldo in 1949. Isoldo is the first part of the names... Esther, Solomon and Dorothy after the company owner's family. 
It closed in 1967 and a bingo hall followed, later becoming a nightclub around 1972. The main building was demolished in 1987, but the facade still exists today as a shopping front. Okay, so literally on the edge of the canal, we find our next cinema. Here is the back of the Roxy Cinema. Uh, this one opened in 1915. It was originally called the Electric Theatre and could seat 800 people. It became the Roxy quite late, 1952, and closed again in 1963 before becoming a bingo hall and then later a nightclub. Okay, so it's now called the New Roxy Cafe Bar and Venue, but look, you've got the date stone 1915. And it definitely has the look of a cinema. On offer, live boxing. And yeah, it looks like it's still a nightclub as well. Litters had been here at the traffic lights at Bolton Brow and was apparently on that side of the road there, previously a chapel and it was around again 1917. There is a chapel there but I think let's get a bit nearer see if we can see anything. Right, so it's suggesting that it was here. I don't know if it was on this stretch here. Uh, could be actually. Look, there's a. Things have definitely been dug out here. But likewise, it could have also been at this side, but somehow I doubt it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think whether it was the cinema or not, things were definitely here. Look at the wall, there's definitely been buildings here. And further up, you can see where there would have been a door there. Right. I'll take a rough guess it was here. It was called the Cozy Cinema later becoming the Ritz in 1954. Its final film was a double bill of Battle Hymn and Blazing a Trail to the Stars. Okay. Now we're in Hebden, Hebden Bridge, if you're not watching it locally. And this is Hebden Bridge Picture House. So in the memorial gardens in Hebden Bridge, right in this spot here, this was the site of the Royal Electric Theatre, Hebden Bridge's first picture house. It's been gone for over 90 years. The Royal Electric Theatre, aka the Wood Hut, or also the Flea Pit if you were my grandma, opened in December 1912. In 1919 it was decided to build a bigger cinema, which is the one that still stands today. The building work was undertaken by Oldfield Watson. Their yard was next door to the cinema where the marina is today. They also built Peckett Pike. The picture house opened in 1921 and the Royal Electric closed. It was demolished and replaced with the Memorial Gardens in 1938. So if you were to ask me which is my cinema, this one. 
Ebden Bridge Picture House. This is a cinema I've been coming to for 40 years. <laughs> and, you know, my memories of growing up with film are from this cinema. 1982, I remember seeing E.T., saw Return of the Jedi here. And then throughout the 80s, Goonies, Labyrinth, Black Cauldron, end of the 80s, The Burbs, Batman, twice. We stayed and watched it a second time, went my brother for that one. And all those memories that you have as a child of a cinema, for me, that's this place. As a teenager, I'd be at the cinema pretty much every single week. But the funny thing is, Ebden only used to show one film a week. Uh, I remember really clearly, we had Congo for a week in 1995. It wasn't very successful. Uh, the um, I think what song guides used to be like a sheet like that split into four <laughs> with uh, what films were on each week. So yeah, some were good, some not. But the ones that were good were memorably good and I would queue from the front of the cinema right back past the park. I've just shown you where the uh, original Hebden Bridge cinema was, sometimes almost as far around as the post office. If you know Hebden, you'll know where I mean. Um, yeah, films like Jurassic Park was queued around the block, Independence Day, Full Monty, and even Titanic. Though, <laughs> I didn't enjoy watching Titanic upstairs in that cinema at the time. Seats upstairs were not great. One mainstay of our visits to the cinema in the 80s and 90s was the projectionist Roger Bogg, who worked for the cinema for 40 years was always there in the foyer when we went to visit and when he walked down to the front, closed the fire exits and pulled the curtains on, he knew the film was about to get underway. We miss you Roger. I suppose one last quick film memory from Hebden is about 1999 went to see Blair Witch Project and really enjoyed it and what I used to do though was walk home uh, once I'd finished it's about a mile and a half away from the cinema. Most of that was through the woods at Nook Clough. I uh, <laughs> knew it like the back of my hand. I was quite happy to walk through it in the dark. Um, but yeah, after watching my witch project, that was a fairly speedy walk back. Cinema was also apparently in operation in the co-op hall in Hebden between 1920 and closed in 1930. Okay, next location, we're now in Brig House. Uh, there are a few cinemas here back in the day and let's see if we can find them. Okay, so the first one we found today is actually no longer here at all. It hasn't been here for a very long time. This area here uh, was called Atlas Mill, and in the uh, beginning of the 1900s, uh, they made it into an ice skating rink. In 1911, they attached the cinema, and they kept the ice skating rink because then between intermissions of the film, uh, the visitors to the cinema could go to the ice skating rink. Now in 1918 it was closed and demolished <coughs> roughly the end of World War I and basically what you see now is what's here. Seeing the cobbles I do wonder if these are the original cobbles uh, that led to Atlas Mill. There's a picture of it you can just about see the roof of the cinema, the curved roof. Uh, I'll stick that on but yeah that is that is it for this one. Maybe this was also part of Atlas Mills, I'm not sure. Okay, that would suggest it might have been here where these mobile homes are. Next we have the Albert Theatre and Opera House, which opened in 1899 and seated 
1,100 people. In 1953, they installed CinemaScope here. It closed in 1972 and became a bingo hall. Right, behind me is the Ritz Cinema. This opened in 1937, ran as a cinema till 1961. Surprise, surprise, when it closed, it became a bingo hall. 1960s, everywhere was just full of bingo halls. Uh, as you can see, it has been a venue up till recently, uh, but is now for sale. Uh, but yeah, let's see if we can have a walk around it. Apparently the name changed to Venue 73, which is number 73 Bradford Road, um, is interestingly because it was called the Ritz initially, uh, but then when they tried to reopen it as the Ritz, they were told by the Ritz they were not allowed to use the name. Seems a bit unfair. So I did look on the posters for any dates of when it may have closed into its current situation, but I couldn't find anything signed there for Ginger Taylor's Northern Soul Show. Anyway, next up is the Savoy Cinema, which was inside the Brighouse Civic Hall. This was also called the Bug Hut. Opened in 1900, became known as the Savoy Cinema and closed in 1959. Okay, next stop is Ellen, and behind me is the Town Hall, or maybe what was the Town Hall, in Ellen. Uh, this became a cinema in 1909, and uh, closed as a cinema in 1959. Um, the last film they showed here uh, was a Clark Gable film, I think it was San Francisco. And the cinema was called The Palladium. Then we have... So the Rex Cinema opened a central picture house in 1912, closed in 1959 but then reopened as the Rex in 1960. Yep, it became a bingo hall naturally, but that shut down in 1985. It was purchased by two businessmen and reopened as a cinema in 1988 and still runs films today. Okay, intermission time. So why not head off, put the kettle on, grab some popcorn, come back and join us for part two, when we're going to head to Bake Up, and then it's the big one. It's the old Halifax cinemas. Go on, be quick. Not gone for long. curtains back. Let's get ready for part two. Okay, so I gave away the plot twist at the beginning of the video. Um, we 
we're going down somewhere. It is a quite cold valley, but it wouldn't have felt right missing out. Um, so, uh, let's head for the beautiful day on the bus to Bake. Okay, so now we're in Bacon, so let's find the two former cinemas that were in the town here. Okay, first Bacon area is this building here. Okay, so this building behind me is the Royal Court Theatre in Bacon, and it's built on top of the Henrietta Street Iron Foundry, which was gutted by fire around 1850. They decided to try and salvage something. Uh, they built this theatre round using the walls of what was left of the ironworks. And this building opened in 1893, and at the time could seat 1,200 people. In 1911, it became the Art Picture Palace and staged shows and films. Though films eventually dominated what it did from about the 1930s onward. And like a stuck record, it closed in the 1960s and became a bingo hall until 1968 when it was bought by the Bake Up. Uh, Amateur, I think Amateur Dramatic Society may get that slightly wrong and uh, so since then um, they've used the building for their performances there may well still be films shown I'm not sure however the theatre is far more famous for something else this theatre is one of the most haunted places in the UK and over the years there have been reports from theatre staff, the public and the performers who have seen and heard unusual things. Objects being thrown, bells ringing, cold spots and drafts. Even some strange blue legs have been spotted. There is a corridor at the back of the theatre that was once seating and people have been heard taking their seats in performances. There have been sightings of Kitty, the usherette who worked there in the early days, and Nora, who was possibly caught on camera in 2008, an old lady seen dressed in black who shouldn't have been there. The basement of the theatre is the foundations of the ironworks, where disasters and death often occurred. An old boiler room there is haunted by a man in a black leather apron, Two children have also been reported being seen here. The suggestions that ghost could be Abraham Dewhurst, who suffered a bad injury in the foundry. Add the ghost of a doctor in the reception, and a dressing room where old faces look back at you from the mirrors. Extraordinary to think all that happens in this building. On the site behind me was Bake Up Public Hall, uh, which was built in 1878. They started making uh, screening, sorry, films here in 1910. Um, took the name of the Rex Cinema and then became the Cozy Picture House. Uh, but that was demolished and replaced with the building that's behind me now. So the Cozy Cinema was demolished in 1931 and this took its place which was the new Regal Super Cinema which could seat 960 people. Well you can see those five circles on the facade. They originally spelt the word Regal. So naturally it won't surprise you that it closed in the 1960s and became a bingo hall. So this closed as a bingo hall in 2005 and has remained empty ever since. Uh, there are some pictures taken in 2019 from when uh, Urban Explorers got in but nothing since then. I'm not even sure it has a roof anymore.
This is the back of the regal. So I think there have been numerous attempts to demolish the building. Kind of hope that doesn't happen. Something can be done with it. We lose too many buildings that way, don't we? They get tatty. Let's get rid of it. Surely it could be used for something. I think before we get on to the Halifax ones, let's look at what we've done so far. Todman and Hebden, um, Cornell, and there's a very definite pattern, isn't there? Everything kind of opens roughly 1917, give or take, which must be when there was a big boom in cinema demand. And then late 50s, 60s, closed, closed, closed across the board, really. Even the ones that are still open today, even if they didn't close, they hit really bad periods of time. So many of them seem to have become bingo halls. Um, yeah, Let's see if Halifax throws up anything different. It's hailing. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, so for the Halifax ones, Tom's joining us. Um, excuse his green eyes, he was at work the other day. <laughs> oh, mine, I mean. <laughs> Not quite. Um, so, we're going to now find all the uh, Halifax related cinemas if we can. We start with this one behind us. We're at King Cross, so we're, we've come up out of the, to the edge of Halifax, if you like. Um, and yeah, Barry's Cash and Carry was a cinema. So, this was. The Palladium Cinema on King Cross in Halifax opened in 1914 and could seat 895 people. Now I asked for permission and were allowed access inside to the cash and carry. This would have been the former balcony. It was a very, very small balcony and only had seven rows of seats and the projection booth would have been at the back. Where the screen would have been is that rectangular space just there. It became the new Palladium Cinema in 1944, but closed in 1962. It became a bingo hall, but has been retailed for a many number of years. Turning on the Queen's Road, we find the Picture Drome Cinema. This opened in 1912 for 540 people. It was renamed the Kingston Picture House and then the Lyric Cinema. There is some an inscription at the top of the building that calls it the Kingston Liberal Club. It closed on the 13th of July 1951 and has been used for many years recently as a bathroom showroom. Also on Queen's Road was the Cosy Corner Picture Palace, which opened in 1914. It sat 700 people in here and closed in 1964. It's been retail premises ever since then and is currently a pharmacy and a clothes shop on the side. So this area here is where we would have found the Alhambra, which was a huge building that opened in 1840 as an Odd Fellows Hall. Over the years it had such visitors as Charles Dickens, 1858, who read A Christmas Carol from here. 
In 1900 it became the People's Palace. Films began screening here in 1917. In 1920 it became the Alhambra Picture House, then the Alhambra Cinema. It operated as a cinema until 1959. Sadly, this magnificent building is now demolished and is the car park that we've just filmed. Now, the effects of this current cinema is the view. As far as I know, that's the only cinema in town. And it was a nine screen cinema that opened in 2012. Yeah. Okay, so this one is the Odeon Cinema, which opened in June 38 and could seat over 2,000 people. Uh, it was an Art Deco style building, both inside and out, and there are some pictures of it uh, because it was, until fairly recently, also a bingo hall. Noticeably, in the architecture, it was dominated on either side of a screen by two giant statues of females. So it made it quite unique. Between 1959 and 1964, it also hosted a number of music stars, including Cliff Richard, Billy Fury, Dusty Springfield, and many more. It closed as a cinema in 1975. Okay, across the road from here is what was the Gem Cinema, where it says YMCA. This one was actually the first cinema in Halifax, known as Marlborough Hall, and could seat 700 people. Films started being shown here in 1896, and it became the Gem Cinema in 1917. Now we make our way to Northgate, which is an area that's seen a lot of change over the decades. Anne Lister, famously of Gentleman Jack, owned Northgate House. This building we're looking at is now called Northgate House, so potentially it's on the same site. Northgate House was changed into a hotel. Next door to that, they built Northgate Hall. The date stone that was on the building was laid by Anne Lister and Anne Walker in 1835. That became a cinema in 1912, the Cinema Deluxe, and could seat 550 people. It became the Theatre Deluxe in 1914. Apparently in 1920, the projectionist of the Cinema Deluxe was Rillington Place serial killer John Christie. If you're interested elsewhere on my channel, you will find a video of John Christie in Halifax, as well as the other serial killer projectionist Peter Moore from Wales. Both of those videos are on the channel here. The Theatre Deluxe closed in 1938 and was demolished in 1959. Next is the Grand Cinema, built on the site of the wooden-built Gaiety Theatre, opened in 1889 and could seat 1,650 people. Films were shown here from 1911. This was still also a theatre and an opera house until becoming a full cinema conversion in 1925. Initially the Grand Picture House and then the Grand Cinema, it closed in 1954, demolished in 1958. Now it's a car park, but the rear wall is still there. We have a mystery. We do. So, this theatre, is it this wall? Uh, what's left is its rear wall, or is the rear wall that one? 
I would say that one. That one? Because that one's more on the bridge. Okay. And that looks more like a real wall, but... but this is obviously a demolished building. Nice metal work. But has this been demolished after 1958? Does anyone remember? <laughs> Sorry? Anyone remember? <laughs> anyone remember? <laughs> uh, well, we could dream. Okay, so we're going to suggest maybe it was this one. Maybe this red brick building could have been it. And there's obviously been windows, hasn't there? Which have now been filled in. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything around this side. We have clumps for this one. This one. There's a big stage door down there. Thing. Yeah. Loading, loading. Yeah. The windows up there. Definitely. So. There we go. Yeah. We can figure these things out. Moving from Northgate to Southgate in Halifax, we find the Theatre Royal. The theatre was built on this site in 1789, though the current building here appeared in 1905. In 1927, the huge fire destroyed the interior. It became a cinema in 1933, could see 1,550 people. It closed in 1960 to become, oh, have a guess. That's right, a bingo hall. That closed in 1992, but become a nightclub. But it's been sat empty since 2007. The facade on the front is grade two listed. Next, we have ABC Cinema. Also, has had other names. There's a Canon Cinema label there. The ABC Cinema was actually called The Regal, opened in 1938. It had 2,000 seats inside it. It was renamed the ABC in 1961, and in 1976, was converted to a three-screen cinema. Okay, so this was the ABC Cinema. Um, this is the cinema that my mum used to go to when she came into Halifax in the 50s and 60s. Go to this cinema. Interestingly, I followed her. So I used to work for a company called John Holdsworth's. And when we finished, it was down by the Shea, and I lived in Boothtown, I would usually walk this direction and I'd pop into here. I think there was a, this was a three or four screen cinema then. But it's a time when there wasn't many people heading into the cinema about six o'clock at night. Uh, so around about 1999, 2000, uh, I had the cinema to myself quite often. Unfortunately, that effect, it, it rolled over because by 2002, they did a screening of Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. And that was the last film that was here. Uh, as you can see, it's become numerous nightclubs and things since. Um, I think, unfortunately, it has been the scene of tragedy here fairly recently. There's a lot of flowers and tributes just over here. Um, but, yeah, that was my Halifax Cinema. The Picture House Cinema on Ward's End opened in 1913. It closed as a cinema in 1960 and it became a bingo hall. Two small cinemas were also built inside it, Astra 1 and Astra 2, but these closed in 1982. Okay, so after it finished being a cinema, this became the notorious Coliseum nightclub. How many of you have spent a good evening in there? Probably a bad one. Um, if you wanted drinks for 75p, this was the place to come. However, there is a ghost story attached to the cinema element of it. 1948, there was a screening of The Ghost of Frankenstein. The audience were watching it. Halfway through the film, the screen suddenly had some red glow on it and the film disappeared off the screen. When the audience turned round, they noticed that the projection booth was on fire. The audience got out, and the projectionist Raymond Farrer 
suddenly died in the fire. Um, we found out he's buried at King Cross. Maybe one day we'll go and look through his grave. Um, but it is said he is still here. Many people have worked here. Um, there are noises, bangs, and things heard uh, in the top floors. So is Mr. Farrow, the projectionist, haunting this place? You were robbed. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the back of what was the picture house. Next up is the Electric Theatre. In 1911, this was a riding school and was converted into a cinema and called the Electric Theatre. It had 800 seats inside. This was enlarged to 1100 in 1928, and then increased again to 1700. It closed in 1956, and has later been a DIY store, a car showroom, and a snooker club, as well as the Electric Bowl bowling alley. Unfortunately today, we didn't get a chance to go to Lee Mount to try and find the location of the Pioneer Cinema, but it did burn down in 1963, so it's been gone a long time. What it seems is a lot of the cinemas disappeared in the early 60s and obviously became bingo halls. I'm sure there's reasons for its mass decline, but I do wonder if TV arriving in people's homes is the reason. Okay, so there we go. A bit of an epic, this one. Uh, but we conclude our search for the lost cinemas of the Calder Valley and beyond here outside the former Coliseum nightclub. Oh, what memories. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this little trip back through a century and more of cinema. Which is your favourite cinema? What are your memories of films growing up? I told you mine from the Hebden ones and across there at the ABC. I'd love to know. But I hope you've enjoyed this little trip through time. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye for now.